Welcome to another episode of Ask a Physicist. This time with a question from Blackbird three o seven, who wonders if, assuming that the world is a perfect sphere, and we build an unbendable ring around it about a meter off the ground, would it float? So basically, what Blackbird is asking here is, assuming the world is round and we have an equally round ring rounded, going from pole to pole, or around the equator, uh, would it stay at the position where it is, or would it fall to either side? Now, there are two considerations on this, uh, both of which containing, um, well, interesting physical principles to consider. First one being angular momentum. As many of you know, uh, there are in fact planets in our solar system which have rings. For example, Saturn. Now, these rings aren't one meter above the ground. In fact, they are many kilometers off the ground. Um, furthermore, these rings are not solid or unbendable, but they're actually pieces of dust circulating the, the planet. So, in a sense, uh, every one of Saturn's rings is actually a collection of little particles all orbiting the planet, just like the Moon orbits the Earth and just like the Earth orbits the Sun. Now, um, how does angular momentum come into this? Well, um, as I've explained in my video on dark matter, uh, the closer a particle or a moon or a planet is orbiting, the, the faster it has to move. I.e. if the moon was closer to the Earth, it would have to uh, move much faster in order to stay in orbit. In the same way, the particles which are orbiting Saturn in Saturn's rings have to move faster if they are closer to um, the planet. So, in fact, what we observe is a shear within the particles of Saturn, which in fact can cause little jets. That's off the point. So, what's the point here? Uh, what I'm saying is, just like Blackbird described, uh, we have rings around a planet that stay in place, so in other words, float, and thus, in a sense, match Blackbird's criteria, except that they're much further away and not solid. The thing which is holding these rings in place, however, is, is their angular momentum, i.e. the angular momentum of every single particle in the rings orbiting at the right speed. For the ring that Blackbird proposes, uh, that being one meter off the ground and around moving around the Earth, uh, we can do a few calculations and find that in order for this ring to be in stable orbit, it would have to move at eight kilometers per second. So uh, that is nearly ten times the speed of sound which I would say is a rather high speed for objects orbiting the Earth at just above one meter off the ground. So that doesn't sound terribly realistic, but then again, building a ring around the Earth is not a very realistic proposition to begin with. So there you are. So we've covered that, but what if the ring isn't spinning? This is where the second physical principle comes in, which is that of unstable equilibrium. Now, what do we mean by, well, equilibrium? Uh, the way to think of this is to simply think of um, a round boulder. You're moving up a hill or down a valley. You can leave it on the top of a hill and it will be stable. You can also leave it at the bottom of the valley and it will be stable. Anywhere in between, it will start rolling down towards the valley. Now, 
at the bottom of the valley, it will be perfectly stable. As in, you can push it left or right, and it will just roll back to its original position. That is what we call stable equilibrium. However, if you leave it on top of the hill, uh, it might be stable, but if you push it either way, even slightly, it'll start rolling down. That is what we call an unstable equilibrium. Now, in the previous example, the only force that was causing and breaking the equilibrium was gravity, i.e. when at the bottom of the valley it's gravity, which uh, holds the boulder in place and brings it back, and on the top of the hill it's gravity which causes to roll down when we break equilibrium. A more interesting physical scenario would be if we also include centripetal force. And an example of that is when it comes to placing satellites in the Earth-Sun system. As it turns out, there are several points of equilibrium in the Earth-Sun system where we can leave satellites and they will simply stay in place relative to the position of the Earth and the Sun. Now these points are called Lagrangian points and some of them, namely L4 and L5, are in fact stable equilibrium. That means if you place a satellite there and even if you give it a slight push it will just move back to that position and stay there. Other points, for example the point just between the Earth and the Sun, are unstable equilibrium. So they are can be placed there and stay there, but even if they're slightly perturbed, they will start moving towards either the Earth or the Sun, depending where they were pushed. Now, while this is not quite as ideal, it's still better than nothing, because it will take very little energy to keep them in place. But let's get back to the ring. The reason I brought up unstable equilibrium is because this ring is a perfect example of unstable equilibrium. If the Earth is indeed perfectly spherical and the ring is perfectly round, then this ring will be attracted on all sides equally. In other words, it will be pulled towards the Earth at the top, it will be pulled towards the Earth at the bottom, and it will be pulled towards the Earth at both sides. In other words, there are four force components and they all cancel. The reason all these force components cancel is because um, the ring is the same weight at all sides and it has the same distance to the Earth at all sides. So the forces of gravity at each point are exactly equal. In other words, the ring is in equilibrium. It would just simply stay fixed around the Earth. But let's say we give the ring a little push. Let's say we're at the North Pole and we push it just a little downwards. The top side of the ring will now be closer to the Earth than the bottom side. And according to the law of gravity, the attraction of the top side of the ring will now be greater than the attraction of the bottom side of the ring towards the Earth. Therefore, um, the ring will now move downwards because the force pulling it down on the top side is greater than the force pulling it back on the bottom side. In other words, the ring will keep moving towards the North Pole on the top side till it hits the Earth. So, in other words, the ring, while the ring was in equilibrium to start with, it was unstable equilibrium, and even a slight perturbation of the ring caused it to drop to the ground on one side. So, uh, there you have it, Blackbird. Either you get the ring to spin at 8 kilometers per second or you leave it stationary in unstable equilibrium and simply agree with everyone on earth that no one gives it a push and then the ring will indeed float as you say. So thanks for the question. I think this was a rather interesting conceptual idea and thanks everyone else for watching. I hope I see you all next time. Bye for now.